guys, I'm Dakota with Waldemar Design and Machine, and today I want to discuss cone rolling with our 310 series. So if you're unfamiliar with the 310 series and what all it's about, please click on the video link right up here, and that'll take you to a video, kind of a general overview of the 310 series. But today we want to discuss cone rolling in particular. So first off, when cone rolling, I guess the first thing we need to decide is what your cone size is or what you're looking to roll. I'm assuming you might be a job shop, something just came through um, the, the door that you would like to try and roll. So the first thing you need to determine is your cone size. Um, and once you know that, you wanna look at the capacity of your machine. Is your machine going to be able to roll it? So as a general rule of thumb, we figure about half the capacity of roll in a normal cylinder on your machine. So let's say you have quarter inch by five foot machine, which is what we're using today. Shout out to Valley Welding for letting us use their 310 660. And it is a quarter inch by five foot machine. So if we're rolling cones, we could just roughly off the top of our head say, well, it'll do eight, in, eight inch by five foot, or it'll do quarter inch by two and a half feet. Um, those are just kind of, you know, rough estimate, general rule of thumb. For specific calculations on cones, you can feel free to reach out to us and our design engineer would be more than happy to go over your cone and make sure that it is within capacity of your machine. The reason that your capacity is only half the working length or half the thickness is mainly due to torque. Because you are only gripping the outside diameter, you need more torque in order to drive your part through. So that is the reason on the limited capacity. Now that you know that your cone is in capacity, we also need to make sure that your machine has a cone attachment. And yes, that is um, a special attachment that you will need for rolling cones. Sometimes people think that they can just roll it um, standard, but it does not work. You need to have a cone snubber, something for the cone to skid against. Um, otherwise, you will not make a good cone or won't even really make a cone at all. All right, now that we got all of that out of our way, now that our machine's capable, it comes down to the cone blank. So you can only make the cone for however your blank is cut out. So make sure the cone blank is cut out correctly. Um, figure out your cone size, you know, your slant height, how tall you want your cone to be, the inside diameter or outside diameter, however you want to measure that, and then the minor diameter of your cone and your major diameter. Um, and that'll help you to figure out what your cone blank size should be. I'll put some links to maybe a calculator or something in the description. All right, so now you have your cone blank and your machine has the capacity to roll this cone. So let's talk about the rolling procedure. Okay, so now for the rolling procedure. Um, the first thing you're gonna want to do is make sure your cone attachment snubber, this little blue um, block that you're cone blank is going to skid against on the inside diameter, make sure it is in position. Um, you want it to be as close to the drop inside as possible for the tightest cone diameter, but depending on your cone size, you won't be able to take it clear to the end or it might hit the drop in, but um, you should be able to get the best minor diameter, the closest you have the snubber to the drop end. Once that's in place, um, use an Allen wrench to secure the set screws on the um, clamps and to make sure that that is firmly set. Once your snubber is in position, you want to adjust your pinch pressure. So you want to be able to grip the material, your cone blank, um, with as little pressure as, as possible, um, but you want to mainly grip it on the major diameter side. So if you think about it, the, the cone blank that's going through there it has way more material that's gonna be rolling on the outside diameter compared to the inside diameter. It's gonna travel way further. So it needs to skid against the snubber. That's what it's there for, to ride against that. So if you grip your material too tight, it can't skid against the snubber and you're gonna get um, to where it's gonna mar the inside diameter of your roll if you grip it too tight. So grip it just enough to pinch the outside diameter and you can still wiggle it freely. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is you might have to adjust the pinch roll out of parallel. So if you're rolling um, a cone blank 
that's wider than half the working length of the machine, you'll have to trim the pinch roll. And you're um, on a 310 series, if you have the hand wheels there, which all of them come with the hand wheels, you can um, do a pinch trim. If you're on a 403 series or another hydraulic um, counterpart, you may need to get the pinch trim option if you're planning on rolling cones over half the working length of your machine. If it's under half the working length, the crown of the rolls usually takes care of the adjustment you need there with the pinch trim. So um, once you have the pinch pressure adjusted correctly to where it can, can move, just make sure your material is in the starting groove so that it starts out square. We need our material to be square or it will corkscrew. So make sure it's inserted into the starting groove and completely tied up against the snubber. Don't leave a gap in between. So make sure it's tight against the snubber. And now we are ready to perform our first pass. Well, actually not quite. Our first pass, we want it to be 65 to 85% closed after one pass. You do not want to roll your material in one complete pass. And that's because it skews um, to where the two ends will not meet up. They will be offset. As you can see here, um, there will be a gap because of the, the stress and the pressure that's pushed on the cone blank, skidding around that snubber, it twists it in one direction. So you have to roll it one way and then back the other way um, in order to straighten itself back out. In other words, it's gonna pull the material one direction and then when you roll it the other way, it'll pull it back to parallel and you'll get the ends to meet up in the end. So the first pass only 65 to 80% closed. So now that we know that, um, we need to go to the bending roll and adjust it up. So you can adjust the bending roll up and down with the hand wheel on the side or power bending adjustment, depending on what model you have. And then um, you also need to trim it because we need to get the angle of our cone, right? So there is a trim coupler latch that can be disconnected um, and then it will just move the drop-in side or the end that your workpiece slides off of on the 310 series. Um, it will just adjust that side up and down. So for the first pass, if you're starting it on the drop-in side here, you'll want to lower the bending roll down till it's at the bottom and then um, release the trim coupler latch and, and wind it up with the hand wheel or with the power bending adjustment until you get the angle you want. Then you can lock the trim coupler latch together and they, the roll will move up at that angle. Once the bending roll is in position, you can start rolling um, your rolling process and you want to roll it through and until it gets um, to the end of your material and hopefully that's about 65 to 80 percent closed when it's done. Do not roll your material completely on through. Um, leave the material still just barely pinched in between the rolls and then release the latch handle so that um, you can take your part out or maybe you can just pull it out but you do not want to um, take the part out while it's still under pinch pressure because then the rolls will snap back together and it'll be very bad on the bearings um, of your plate roll so it's one thing to keep in mind there if you did not completely close it, um, your workpiece enough, down to the 65 or 80%, maybe it's the first time you rolled this cone size and you're only 45% shut, you need to get it closed tighter. You can reverse it back and then raise the bending roll and, and uh, put it through again um, and close it up a little bit. But before you reverse the workpiece back, make sure the bending roll is lower and not still in the position it was when you roll it through the first time. You do not want it to be contacting the bending roll when you're just backing it up. So lower the bending roll, back it up, raise the bending roll up higher, and roll it down to that 65 to 80% closed. One nice tip is that if you can stop rolling whenever you can still take the workpiece over the top roll, it makes it easier when you do your second piece to just slide it on over the top roll instead of having to swing out the top roll. It's just one way to speed up production. So now that we are done with the first pass um, and we got it set where we need it, you, if you have more than one cone of the same size, roll all the first passes um, on all of your cone blanks um, to help speed up production once you have your settings correct. 
Now that you've rolled all of them, the first pass, we need to move the snubber over to the other end of the machine. You don't want to, you know, keep rolling these in the same direction tighter and tighter, because as we talked about, they're skewed or there is an offset there and we want them to line up. So we need to roll them in the opposite direction. So um, take your Allen wrench again, release the clamping collar, slide it over to the other end where you need it positioned um, on the drive-in side in this case. And if you want to, you only have to move one collar over. Um, it just needs the one on the side that it's gonna be pushing against and then you can just slide your snubber back and forth um, between either side, depending if you're doing the first pass or second pass side. Once your snubber's in place, we need to change the pinch trim position to be angled the other way. So adjust that the same way you did before the first pass. And then we need to adjust the bending roll to be trimmed in the opposite direction as well. So lower your bending roll the whole way down again. Um, unlatch it, make sure it's parallel. And then you raise your bending roll up this time because remember the drop-in side is the side that moves whenever you unlatch it. So then you can raise your bending roll up, unlatch the uh, trim coupler latch, and then lower it so that it lowers the drop-in side and you have that taper higher on the drive-in side, lower on the drop-in. When you latch it again, it'll move up and down um, holding that angle. But you're gonna wanna try and match the angle that you had before, but in the opposite direction. So if you roll your workpiece through a little bit till it's touching the bending roll, you can kind of see where you're at on the angle. And then you will want to raise your whole bending roll up together after you have the angle and push against your workpiece slightly because it needs to be a little bit tighter than what you've rolled previously. So once that's all set, you want to take your workpiece again and put it in the starting groove. We always got to start square and then start easing it through. Um, and hopefully you'll get it in the first try or two, um, get it closed toward the line, toward the ends meet up perfectly um, and it skewed the material in the opposite direction and you have a nice clean um, spot where the cone meets up. One thing you're going to want to look out for is re-rolling your material. So if you accidentally got it too tight to where your material overlaps on the cone, um, you want to make sure that you don't feed that through again to where there's, you know, double layer um, tries to go through the pinch and top roll there. Um, it could damage your machine. So just make sure you stop rolling if you see that you are overlapped there when it's coming between the pinch and top roll. And then one more tip as well is if your cone is going to have probably a little flat spot down the minor diameter here, as you can see. Um, and so one tip to get that out, if you need a precise cone, is you can tack weld um, your cone together. Um, once, once you have it pretty well rolled, tack weld it, and then re-roll it in the machine. You want to be, you know, it doesn't have to have very much pinch pressure. You kind of want to cradle the cone on the machine and then just keep rolling it around until that smooths itself out um, after several passes and you should have a great cone by the time you're done with it. So I hope that helped answer any questions you might have in using an initial pinch plate roll um, for rolling cones. I have a link to the video up here if you want to watch how to do it on a four roll. Um, but this is the process for an initial pinch roll and if you have any questions feel free to comment them below or reach out to us on our website or via email and um, or give us a call and we'd be happy to talk with you and discuss all things plate angle rolling um, so yeah enjoy being with you guys today and we'll talk to you next time